you might have seen this viral clip on the internet. It was, as we say in French, a gas. So on the 4th of September, 2023, the internet was set ablaze when a viral clip surfaced on Twitter, I think, of superstar Kylie Jenner and actor Timothy Chalamet standing atop a VIP balcony together at Beyonce's star-studded concert in LA. And uh, with the beauty and grace of a young woman who's fully aware she's being watched, and I know this, because when I'm out in public and I look that good, I move the same way, just less rich. We can see in the clip Kylie Jenner floating, literally floating like a god though, because the clip was filmed by someone obviously less rich down in the crowd, looking up towards her in the VIP balcony where we can't see her feet. Actually, let me just recreate the scene with some voiceover. So in the clip, Kylie Jenner floats, floats, towards the magnetic pull force of Timothy Cutlet, AKA Timothy Chalamet. They, uh, I don't know, smell each other's pheromones, okay? She takes a moment to glance down at the plebeians whilst giving us a little shoulder, a little collarbone. Meanwhile, Timothy Chalamet stands next to arguably one of the most desirable women in the entire world, cool as a mother cucumber, just like, and Kylie Jenner is like, and uh, shortly after this, TMZ would release another clip of them looking a little less like floating gods. The camera angle is more straightforward and uh, give the internet the confirmation it's been looking for after months of speculation. They're f***ing. Okay, mm. sorry to be so crass. They're together. It's a thing. And uh, just like that, a new it couple was born. But as we'll see later in the video, it had been in the making and slowly, slowly shaping itself into the public consciousness as a branded entity by anonymous sources who spoke to various entertainment publications for a very long time. In fact, since the very beginning, which makes this it couple very interesting to me because from the moment news broke, that the two might be seeing each other, the alleged romance sparked immediate backlash and skepticism. Notably, people quickly started calling out the relationship as fake and what is often referred to as a PR relationship, also known as a showmance or fomance. Ex-user V7NTI suspiciously goes, Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner aren't dating. This some nonsense created by Chris trying to get Kylie trending again for other reasons than Haley. And more innocently, ex-user Matt, I can't read Roman numerals, XIV goes, I wonder what they talk about. <laughs> So in modern celebrity culture today, the age of Dermois, the PR relationship allegation, okay, refers to manufactured romantic entanglements that are set up by the individuals in question or their teams in a calculated concerted effort to generate publicity and buzz. It's a relationship that is perceived by the public as purely transactional and often considered kind of a desperate bottom feeding attempt at staying relevant. The PR relationship allegation operates under this understanding that one, celebrity romance is a product that sells. Two, A-listers have become obsessed with milking every part of their lives for profit, including their relationships. And three, the public in turn has become equally obsessed with unveiling the frauds and are engaged in a kind of perpetual witch hunt to expose these cash grabbing endeavors. And so, when news broke that Kylie and Timothy Chalamet might be dating, some individuals instinctively dismissed this pairing as being fraudulent. And as I dug into why this was the case, it seemed like there were a couple different theories at play. At a superficial level, people were just bewildered by the pairing. Okay, Kylie Jenner is a reality TV star and beauty mogul known for dating rappers and with the reputation of being a little obtuse. The Kardashian brand is many things, but deep, moving, and intellectual, artistic, right, is not one of them. In turn, Timothy Chalamet, as a prestige actor, is known for all of these things. Hence, what do they even talk about? And so when I started digging even deeper, it seemed like the specu sentiment 
then became that this was such an out of the blue off brand pairing for the both of them that it reeked of further empirical evidence supporting an internet theory I will refer to as the Kardashian PR Pythagorean theorem. So the Kardashian PR Pythagorean theorem goes as follows. After close to two decades of pop culture supremacy, the Kardashians power and influence is waning as a response to a changing environment, both cultural, political, economic, that sees them, amongst other things, no longer able to exploit black culture for profit with such ease, they are now orchestrating what one writer brilliantly dubbed as a great white pivot in an attempt to adapt or die. And falling smack into this theory is the idea that the Kardashians have been using their romantic liaisons, allegedly, with a string of white men, often referred to as their white boy era, to facilitate this alleged great white pivot. Now, I am not a Kardashian expert, nor a Kardashian scholar. As far as I know, these are just internet theories. And while I do live for the tea, I live for the tea. I am also currently uh, attempting attempting to finish my college degree in journalism. I started that shit 10 years ago, okay? <laughs> That's how that's going. And what this means for this channel is that while I am not a journalist yet, maybe I'll never be one, okay? I do strive to slowly but surely integrate what is considered like journalistic ethic into my work, which means that as a general rule, unless I'm trying to be petty, okay, without actual evidence and receipts, I personally am not prepared to go around calling anybody's relationship fraudulent. However, while we may not for the moment be able to settle whether the chicken came before the egg, what I do know is that a relationship doesn't necessarily need to be fraudulent or a PR relationship for it to be good PR and for it to be good for business. And so in today's video, we will talk about how Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner's relationship is indubitably, inarguably, irrefutably good for both of their businesses. And while this is a pairing that may bewilder people, Given the very conspicuous rebranding of Kylie Jenner away from youth driven mass market appeal towards a more high end luxury market, okay, and the beta male, beta male branding problem facing Timothy Chalamet, this is actually an it couple slash power couple that makes a whole lot of sense and could be highly effective in helping the both of them. And finally, what I also know is that this is a power couple vision that has been slowly but surely sold to us by anonymous sources for months. So we're gonna start with a full timeline of the relationship, then move on to how they've been branded into the public consciousness as Hollywood's premier quiet luxury slash stealth wealth couple. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the branding problem facing the Kardashians and the new direction Kylie is currently bringing her empire in. And finally, we'll end with how Kylie can help Timothy ascend to alpha male leading man status. So without further ado, here's the look today. So, you know, I kept it simple today. Um, the purse is vintage. I got it at an estate sale. I have no idea what brand it is. Um, it's just, it's just very kunt. It's very kunt. Uh, the boots are from Demonia. The t-shirt was gifted to me by my cousin, Ricky. Shout out to Ricky. I recently spent midterm break slash what you would call Canadian Thanksgiving in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. And I hung out with my cousin, Ricky, and he gave me a bunch of band tees. Uh, so I put them up on display. We've got Alexis on fire. We've got, I don't know what band this is. This is like apparently a Greek band. And we've got uh, a band called Gouge Away. So I am 100% that person who wears band tees of bands she doesn't listen to. But I've got some street cred because the t-shirts the were gifted to me by people who listened to the bands and were like, you need to wear this. You'd look cool as f this right? And then when I actually listened to the bands, I was like, damn, this is dope. Galjaway is dope. And I've been listening to Galjaway ever since then. 
So my cousin Ricky uh, <laughs> is into hardcore music and he's been putting me onto hardcore music. He has a band called Luella. If you're into, if you're in, if you like that, <sighs> Check out Luella. And uh, yeah, so he gave me this t-shirt. I've also, you know, I like to decorate my room. So uh, I have my pleasers over here. I've got, uh, I've been wearing the hell out of these Buffalo sneakers all summer. This was like the best purchase I ever made. Uh, so I love, love, love Buffalo. And uh, I've got some 80s <laughs> over here. Bought them, never wear them. But the box, coolest, <laughs> nope. Oh, and I put, decided to put my pleasers up on display here uh, because for 2024, I hope that my fashion reaches the height of my ambition. I bought these heels and I have yet to ever wear them in public because I'm deathly afraid. These are like, this is like nine inches. This is almost 10 inches. And I'm so fucking, I'm afraid of falling on my face and breaking my neck. So I haven't worn them in public yet. So this is, this is to, uh, to hoping I could, I, I have the balls to do that sometime this year. So if you like this video, make sure to like, and subscribe. It really helps my small channel out. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So Kylie Jenner, if you don't know her, I'd be inclined to say you're, wa you're watching the wrong channel, but I'll be gracious today and give you a 10 second recap. Kylie Jenner is a reality television star and beauty mogul. She became famous thanks to her family's iconic reality television show called Keeping Up With The Kardashians. She started her own beauty brand slash cosmetics company, which was a huge success. It sold more than $630 million worth of makeup in just two years since its launch. And basically it propelled her to billionaire status. Since 2017, Kylie Jenner has been in a on and off relationship with rapper Travis Scott and shares two kids with him, Stormy and Aire. Prior to this, she had famously been with Tyga, who is also a rapper without a chin. <laughs> That's not very nice, but hey, you want to get to know me, you're about to get to know me. So the first glimmers of this potential relationship happened in January of 2023. In January of 2023, it had been reported that Kylie had split from Travis Scott sometime after the holidays in late 2022, early 2023. Then on January 25th, 2023, Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet were allegedly spotted together at Paris Fashion Week during the Jean-Paul Gaultier show. This was allegedly their first time meeting. I personally can't confirm this. I wasn't able to confirm this. So this is the Kylie Jenner, Timothy Chalamet myth. So they were apparently spotted enjoying each other's company, but the rumors would really only start swirling and uh, blowing up the internet three months later. April, 2023. At the beginning of 2023, we got a Dermois exclusive. The gossip account Dermois announced to its legion of followers that there was a new couple alert. The account shared a blind item by an anonymous tipster that claimed that the two had been seeing each other since January. Dermois exclusive. I can confirm too about Timothy and Kylie. I've known about them since January, Paris, Fashion Week. Then other people would come out of the woodwork to confirm to Dermois that this was also a thing. Dermois wonders, why are all you guys coming out of the woodwork today? The anonymous tipster goes, to be honest, I didn't believe it. A girl who was on Euphoria told me about it. Someone else claimed to Dermois that they had spotted Timothy Chalamet on a flight to Turks and Caicos at the end of January, around the same time that it looked like Kylie was there. Someone else claimed that they had spent New Year's together in Aspen. Some other people claimed that they were for sure going to make their debut at Coachella together. They were never spotted at Coachella together. So obviously take these blind items with a grain of salt. But most importantly, we do get alleged footage of the two that seemingly confirmed that they had spent time together at the Jean-Paul Gaultier show. The clip that would surface would indeed show the two laughing together and having a good time. And the clip blows up the internet. And from this point on, the anonymous sources start coming forward. Obviously, nobody but the media in question knows who these anonymous sources are. That's the whole point of anonymity the anonymity that you grant your sources. But it is interesting how if you pay close attention to the words used to describe the budding relationship and also the accompanying images, the stories talking about them have, you can immediately start to see the it couple's brand identity and positioning being drawn out and uh, its potential appeal sold to us. Basically, the it slash power couple's mood board, whether calculated or not, 
is coming together. We're gonna be putting together the mood board as I go through the timeline. So on April 12th, 2023, People Magazine would confirm that the pair had been hanging out and getting to know each other via a anonymous source. Not too much detail here, but the word hanging out implies casualness. And this is a word that will be used to describe the relationship and this couple a lot. So let's add hanging out to the mood board. Then on April 13th, 2023, TMZ would drop an article with alleged photographic evidence of the two quote hanging out. Okay. The paparazzi would spot Kylie Jenner's black Range Rover SUV in the driveway of Timothy Chalamet's Beverly Hills home. TMZ goes quote, the billionaire's black Range Rover SUV pulled up to Timothy's sprawling estate Thursday afternoon, and it's sure to drive the internet into a frenzy. The words I want you to keep in mind here are billionaire, black Range Rover SUV. Very evocative, okay? You're a billionaire. You're driving an expensive car and it's blacked out, which implies wanting privacy. So let's put the words billionaire and the black Range Rover up on the mood board. TMZ continues. Kylie wasn't sightseeing either. Her car pulled in from the road and drove straight up the winding driveway. In other words, she knew exactly where she was going. Dun, dun, dun. Juicy. You see what they did there? This evokes determined stealth. Let's put that shit up in the mood board. The next day, we'd also have an alleged eyewitness share with the Daily Mail that they had spotted Chalamet getting into Kylie Jenner's car after leaving an art show in Santa Monica, and the two had a secret date night at Tito's Tacos. The Daily Mail would use the words under the radar and secret to describe the date night. So let's add it to the mood board. That same day as the Daily Mail article on April 14th, 2023, US Weekly, also released an exclusive where another anonymous source describes the couple in the following way. Kylie has only hung out with Timothy a couple of times, so things aren't that serious. However, she's enjoying getting to know him better and is open to seeing where things go. Things are very new, so it's hard to tell, but so far she likes what she sees. So again, again what this conveys to us is that this is casual. It's not that serious. It's somewhat mysterious but also new and alluring. So, you know, stay tuned because she's open to see where it goes. So what do you think this does? It starts to build hype. Okay. So let's add the word mysterious to the mood board. The source continues. Timothy is a total gentleman and treats Kylie with respect. He's very charming and he makes her laugh and he's easy to talk to. He's not like any of the other guys Kylie's dated before. And although he may not seem like her type, they have really good chemistry. So if anybody's familiar with the Kardashians, this is clearly an attempt to position Timothy as a healthy alternative to the alleged toxicity of Kylie's past relationships, notably the one with Travis Scott. Kylie's relationship with Travis Scott was famously plagued with all kinds of cheating rumors and uh, just this sentiment that he was just a bit of a boy, you know, which is a reputation that a lot of the men the Kardashians dated have. They are seen as untrustworthy boys. And honestly, this is something that reflects really badly on the Kardashians. The logic being, if you can't secure a high value man, Maybe it's just because you're not a high value woman. You know, you're, you're just not a high value female. So maybe I'm just a little skeptical. Okay. You know, once you hit 30, life will do that to you. Uh, but when I read into this, what I saw is someone clearly trying to sell the couple to me. Okay. This is a source being like, this might just be exactly the type of man Kylie needs. Okay. It might make more sense than you can imagine. Actually, you know what? Let's put high value up on the mood board. Okay. So this whole, like, it might make more sense than you can imagine pitch. It's a pitch. It's a marketing pitch. Yes. You can call me cynical. You can call me jaded. You can call me whatever you want. It's a marketing pitch. Okay. It would be echoed a couple of days later on April 17th, 2023, when an insider would reveal more information about the couple. The source would describe the relationship as fun and exciting, different from all of Kylie's other relationships. Well, if it's new, fun and exciting for Kylie, it's going to be new, fun and exciting for the public. So, uh, you know, the hype machine, it's pumping. 
okay? Let's put new and exciting up on the mood board. And the source would also give the public a little tip that uh, her big sister, Kendall Jenner, might have allegedly helped orchestrate the relationship. Quote, Timothy is also friends with Kendall, so it's been easy for Kylie to integrate him into her life. This is very juicy information because what it says is that Timothy already runs in similar circles. He's already in the in-group, the circle, the Hollywood celebrity, whatever circle of trust. So basically to me, this is a source that's like, we, we see it for her. We see it for her and uh, we really need you to see it for her and buy into it pronto because we're about to shove this shit down your throat. A couple days later on April 20th, 2023, Us Weekly would also release information provided to them by a anonymous source claiming that the two communicate in one form or another every day and that Kylie is letting herself be courted by him. Quote, she appreciates that he doesn't feel the need to go super over the top with grand gestures just to impress her. Despite what some people think, Kylie's really down to earth and laid back. Having some tacos and just hanging out is a perfect date night idea for her. I really want you to think about the words here. Down to earth, laid back, tacos. Let's add it to the mood board. And then in May, 2023, another source, or maybe it's the same source, who knows, you know, would come forward to Entertainment Tonight and describe the couple's relationship as casual and low key. Let's put low key up on the mood board. And most importantly, okay, most importantly, the source would make sure to feed to the press what any good storyline needs, a bit of drama. The source would share that Kylie's ex, Travis Scott, is not thrilled about Kylie moving on. Then in June 2023, the Daily Mail would officially get photos of the pair arriving at Timothy Chalamet's Beverly Hills home. And once again, Kylie Jenner would be photographed in her black Range Rover SUV. Sources would tell the outlet that the couple were spending plenty of time together and she was at his house upwards of six days a week. Time to play some techno because shit's revving up. I feel, I feel, I feel like we're about to hit a climax. July, 2023. In July, 2023, we'd finally get the drama llama we've been waiting for. Travis Scott would release his new album, Utopia, and on a track called Meltdown, he'd seemingly diss Kylie's new beau. It appears that in this song, Scott would make reference to Timothy's role in the upcoming Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. Travis Scott raps, chocolate AP and chocolate the V's, got the Willy Wonka Factory VS, burn an athlete like it's calories, find another flame hot as me, bitch. So basically just another male rapper being like, I'm the f Don, I'm the f king of New York. Ain't no, ain't nobody hot as me, bitch, okay? Uh, ain't nobody who's fly as me. Okay, I would have dumped his ass too. Then in August, 2023, I, don't, I really don't know. I really don't know what was going on with like the divine alignment of the universe, but someone was straight up trying to cramp this it couple style and fuck up the vibes, put the evil eye on them and like halt the momentum, okay? Life and Style would report that the two had split up and Kylie got dumped. And that would force, uh, you know, the anonymous sources to go on the defense and provide statements to the likes of TMZ and Entertainment Tonight that don't worry, don't worry, the relationship is still going on strong. They're just busy, you know, they have busy schedules. They're billionaires. After all, Kylie later in August would be photographed at Timothy Chalamet's home in her $200,000 Mercedes Maybach. After a shopping spree, she'd be dressed casually in blue jeans and a white t-shirt with a black tote bag. Now the uniform is starting to draw itself out. Let's put this up on the mood board, but you know, she'd be photographed going to see him. And, and after that, we'd get a story from Us Weekly who spoke to sources uh, that would lead us to believe that the romance had kind of fizzled out, you know, as they had busy schedules and they weren't able to see much of each other, but they're still friends. So again, someone's trying to f the vibes in August and like confuse us. I don't know what was happening. It was a very confusing month. And then in September, all the rumors and conflicting stories would come to a screeching halt as the couple would make their official debut. So on September 4th, 2023, 
the couple would go as public as you can go with the romance by appearing at Beyonce's star-studded concert in LA. They look mysterious, they look cool, they look casual, they look low-key, and what was their uniform of choice? Coordinating black outfits. And Chalamet, of course, is wearing a baseball cap. So let's put the look up into the mood board. And basically from that point on, it was off to the races and the couple continued to make plenty of public appearances together that got everyone talking. On September 9th, 2023, they attended a New York Fashion Week event together. It was a dinner celebrating Hayter Ackerman's beauty collaboration with Augustinus Botter, very fancy. Couple once again showed up in coordinating black outfits. And when they arrived, they allegedly set the room abuzz. Timothy Chalamet, once again, at the dinner is wearing a baseball cap. Sorry, I don't know about you, but I'm really starting to see it. It's giving expensive exclusive, high fashion, exciting, hype generating, but also like low key. The following day, they'd attend the US Open together. They'd pack on the PDA, eat chicken fingers, and once again, wear coordinating black outfits. On the surface, the way they're dressed might lead the naive observer to believe that they're like almost in disguise and making a concerted effort to pass a notice, right? pass amongst the masses. But when you understand the fashion dress code traditionally associated with attending an event like a tennis tournament, you can recognize that in their own unique way, they're making an effort to stand out, okay? Because in such an environment, the dress code tends to be less Rick Owens and more Polo Ralph Lauren preppy. So let's add the coordinated black outfit to the mood board. A little later in September, a source would reveal to Entertainment Tonight, uh, <laughs> these sources can love talking to Entertainment Tonight, don't they? Why uh, the couple went public at the Beyonce concert and would basically say that it's because Kylie feels really secure and confident in the relationship and that she feels like she can finally be herself. The source would also share how the pair connect on a deep level and that, you know, Timothy is a family man. They have a lot in common. So the relationship is described as deep and authentic. Let's add deep and authentic to the mood board. And then on September 21st, 2023, the depth and authenticity of their relationship would be confirmed. El Mexico would capture photos of Kylie Jenner at Prada's fashion show and Timothy Chalamet would be visible on her iPhone's lock screen. But most importantly, what is Kylie wearing? All black. But the truth would be exposed because once you zoom in, guess what that is? Prada. And just like that, an outfit that can make you look like on the surface, you're really just a, you know, casual, low key, down to earth girly who likes to eat tacos and stay in on a Friday night uh, becomes three months worth of rent. Okay, so let's put the Prada dress up on the mood board. Finally, on September 25th, 2023, the pair would be spotted during Paris Fashion Week, attending Rosalia's birthday party, and once again, they're in coordinating black outfits. She's wearing sunglasses at night. He's wearing a baseball cap with a hoodie on. And he's basically like trying to like avoid paparazzi. To conclude the timeline in October 2023, Timothy Chalamet would make his first comment about the relationship with Kylie Jenner in an interview with GQ. In the interview, he talks about wanting a private life, but somewhat concedes that it's kind of hilariously ironic given the fact that he's dating one of the most followed women on the internet. Kylie Jenner, as of me making this video, has yet to comment on the relationship, but she did tell the Wall Street Journal magazine in an interview that she's seen Dune and, um, she does love that movie. Now that we've gone through the relationship timeline and identified the words and visual imagery slash signifiers used to illustrate the relationship, we're left with a beautiful tableau, a mood board. And what is this mood board, you might wonder? The aesthetic of quiet luxury. What is quiet luxury slash stealth wealth? My little espresso shot. Oh, look how cute, look how cute. I need some energy because uh, with all due respect, I'm in a shit ass mood today. I'm in a shitty ass mood. I feel like ass and like, I can't really put my finger on it. It's like, 
It's like half just like this existential despair I've been carrying with me since I was like 16 years old. I'm just a little emo in life in general. So it's part that, but then it's also just like winter has officially fallen upon Montreal, Canada. And uh, just the idea that I have to deal with like six more months of this shit, six more months of this shit. It's snowing. November 9th and it's snowing. Uh, I'm just not in the best mood, okay? So I've got my espresso and I've got some gin. Whoever said you can't caffeinate, caffeinate your problems away. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Woo! Je pète le feu. In French, that means I, I'm, I'm farting fire. Je pète le feu. Okay, starting in late 2022 and solidified throughout 2023, Kylie Jenner has been undergoing a very obvious and widely reported on rebrand into a high fashion girly, which is evidenced by her brand partnerships. We'll talk about that later. This has been happening in tandem to her budding relationship with Timothy Cutlet. And coincidentally or not, the aesthetic she has adopted is that of quiet luxury. This is the very same aesthetic Kylie and Timothy are adopting as an it couple as well. There are many theories as to why Kylie Jenner is undergoing this kind of rebrand, and we'll get into all of that later. But first, let's break down what quiet luxury is. Definitely feeling a little bit more, see this is what I love about caffeine. I just feel it right away. So quiet luxury is often referred to as stealth wealth and or the old money aesthetic. At its core, it's a fashion aesthetic, but I'd argue it's also a bit of a philosophy as well. As a fashion trend, it's often described as new age minimalism with a larger focus on investment pieces and thoughtful shopping habits that opt for things like a neutral color palette and generally reject logos. It's about elegance, simplicity, and timeless appeal, okay? So for those watching unfamiliar, the elements of a quiet luxury uniform as described by Vogue are the following. The clinched waist blazer, the clean line skirt, a sleek jean, a prized layering piece, nonchalant trousers, strong outerwear, elevated essentials, luxe loafers, power shirts, biker jacket alternatives, a trophy bag, simple statement sunnies, and I'd also add a modest heel, a conservative, well-tailored dress. But for it to be quite luxury, in my opinion, it needs to be expensive, okay? Relatable on the surface, but aspirational in its detail. And this is why, in my opinion, quiet luxury at its core is defined by deceptive accessibility and a covert element to it. It's almost like average Joe cosplay for the rich, which is part of the goal, right? As a philosophy towards the presentation of self in everyday life, quiet luxury is in line with the traditions found amongst individuals who have been rich for generations, okay? You might be familiar with the saying, new money is loud and old money is quiet, okay? And one of the reasons old money is quiet is survival. In a world with the type of economic and power imbalances we have, being super and wealthy can make you a target. People want to scam you, you kidnap your children for ransom. And so the very rich have been known to try to go unnoticed and blend in in an attempt to survive. Okay. Fashion is one of the ways they do that. But at the same time, uh, they also want to be recognized by members of their tribe. And so within this disguise will often be hidden subtle status symbols, hence the stealth element to it. In a crowd, if you're not focused, someone dressed in this way might look unremarkable, right? Like a regular working man uh, or woman or gender non-binary individual, okay? But if you pay close attention, you'll be reminded of just how poor you are. In my opinion, modesty is an essential part of quiet luxury. And that is because being modest is a flex especially for women. The idea being that when you have money and when you have things like generational comfort slash wealth, you don't need to show skin, you don't need to sell sex, and you don't need to be provocative to get ahead. In other words, doing that is for the plebs. Brands such as Celine under Phoebe Philo, The Row, Totem, and Tove uh, apparently have been providing these kinds of pieces to a niche audience of high fashion lovers for a while. But in 2023, quiet luxury would officially move from backstage 
backstage to front stage, have a moment and literally blow up the internet. Based on my research, the convergence of a few different factors slash pop culture moments seem to have been responsible for this. Number one, the popularity of the HBO drama Succession is said to have contributed to the trend. The series centers around the Roy family, who are the owners of a global media and entertainment conglomerate empire, and the uniform these very rich people wear in the show is stealth wealth slash quiet luxury to a T. Number two, Gwyneth Paltrow also added fuel to the trend fire when she attended a civil court case in Utah and graced photographers with a string of quiet luxury outfits that quickly went viral. Number three, we also have the rise of it girl Sophia Ritchie, who throughout her ascension has embodied this trend, aesthetically at least, uh, to a T as well. Number four, we have major fashion houses like Gucci who've hopped on the bandwagon. And finally, we have the return of quiet luxury mom, Phoebe Philo, uh, who uh, is said to have popularized the aesthetic while she was at Celine. But to me, what makes the adoption of this aesthetic particularly interesting for Kylie Jenner and this new it couple is when we look at the rise of quiet luxury in its wider socioeconomic and cultural context. There is always a wider context that plays into not only rebrands, but also into the rise and fall of trends. Shout out to Understitch, big fan of that channel. He spoke about specifically this in his video about Phoebe Philo, so check that out. Minimalism as a fashion trend is often said to have risen from the ashes of the 2008 economic crisis. It's precisely at this difficult moment in time that designers like Phoebe Philo stepped in to offer a new vision for fashion. Considering that quiet luxury is sometimes referred to as new age minimalism, some say that this trend is also currently being born out of similar circumstances. 2023 is a difficult time for people. Okay, we have two new major wars. Inflation is at an all time high. So many people I know are still recovering and struggling financially from the pandemic. And as well, for many reasons, there's been a shift in how people view celebrities and like the 1%. So if you're a public figure like Kylie Jenner, who has a vested interest in maintaining popularity, now is really not the most appropriate time for loud, ostentatious displays of wealth, okay? So given the times, Kylie Jenner's adoption of the quiet luxury aesthetic makes a lot of sense, but it also makes a lot of sense given the direction she's taking her brand in in order to solve what I will refer to as the Kardashian problem. The Kardashian problem. And this is where you'll see Timothy Chalamet comes in and starts to make a lot of sense for the brand. The Kardashians have a problem, many problems, okay? But their main problem is most easily embodied via a controversial statement made by Stefano Gabbana of the brand Dolce & Gabbana. In 2018, Stefano Gabbana got into a whole lot of hot water for saying out loud what I truly think a lot of people in the fashion industry thought about the Kardashians behind their backs. Stefano Gabbana was spotted in the comment section of a post featuring the Kardashians, uh, and in the post, he calls them the most cheap people in the world. Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports also once went on a rant about the Kardashians when rumors were swirling around that Kim Kardashian might be dating Tom Brady. And Dave Portnoy suggested that Tom Brady should not date Kim Kardashian, but he should just f*** her in a motel instead. Tom Brady can't date Kim Kardashian, okay? Kim Kardashian, listen, she's hot, she's a bazillionaire, but she's like a paparazzi girl. She f on camera to get famous. Sure, she's talented, she does other stuff. She ruins every man's life she touches. She's a Daily News, a page six, a reality TV girl. Kardashian's an A-list, but she's like a, a, a dirty A-list. It's not the real A-list. He wants a f her. Go f her in a motel and, and gossip and tell your friends. Date? We're not dating the Kardashians, Tom. You're better than that. If you're not better than that, none of us are better than that. These comments are obviously disgusting, but the way people choose to insult you is usually a window into a sentiment that exists, okay? The idea that the Kardashians are cheap is a very real perception of their brand. It's a stain and it's a stain that's been difficult to remove. There's many reasons for this stain. We can psychoanalyze it for days, okay? 
It's obviously in part as a result of their association with reality TV, which is obviously not considered like a high quality prestige art form. It's also obviously as a result of Kim Kardashian's sex tape. Selling sex is considered cheap. We live in a misogynistic world and sex is something only cheap slash loose women do. Okay, but I want to bring your attention to something that people don't talk enough about. The Kardashians Association and appropriation of black culture has also come at a cost. We have a caste system in this world and black people tend to be at the bottom. And unfortunately, the more you associate with black culture from a marketing slash advertising standpoint, while it might help you differentiate yourself within white audiences, generate attention and make money off of things like, I don't know, the black male gaze, you might also in turn ostracize yourself from luxury markets, especially in high fashion. High fashion is racist as f and being accepted by high fashion circles is usually one of the many elements you need in order to be perceived as a prestige brand or prestige influencer. OK, but this is also true across industries. And I have a really unique perspective on this because my dad is Italian and my mom is black and nobody knows I'm black. OK, so I've been privy to all kinds of conversations and comments by people who are unaware the other is in the room. And I am here to report to you. OK, high end anything will start to sweat if their products and places of business start becoming trendy amongst people of color. But there's more to it. Obviously, the business moves they've made have not helped. The quality of the products they've released have not helped. Their previous fashion aesthetics have not helped. Their brand collaborations. All of this has contributed to an image of new money cheapness that they've had a really difficult time to shake. In tandem, their brand of celebrity and what they've done to get famous has received a lot of backlash and scrutiny. Um, plenty of opinion pieces suggest that they just can't culture vulture like they used to and so have embarked on a kind of mission to pivot away from all the negative associations their brand has and reinvent themselves. Uh, as so eloquently described by Highbrow Magazine, would be to ascend the world of mere celebrity, which they've obviously outgrown, and position themselves as more serious, substantive uh, figures, which makes sense. Okay, because when you really think about it, the Kardashians, to me at least, really aren't new money anymore. Okay, they're money money. They've been pop culture royalty. They're not just a flash in the pan. And now two of the sisters, Kim and Kylie, are certified billionaires as a result of being business moguls. Okay, it's about time we start to take them a bit more seriously. And so one of the many ways they've been going about this Okay, the, the execution of this rebranding is uh, by distancing themselves from mass slash urban markets, right? That they really had no business capitalizing on in the first place and moving towards luxury prestige markets, white markets. It's a metamorphosis that started with Kim Kardashian and is now potentially going to be taken to the next level by Kylie Jenner. And the relationship that Kylie Jenner has with Timothy Chalamet may be one of the many keys the strategy needs in order to be successful, whether it be calculated or just harmonious synchronicity. Kylie's rebrand. Now, again, without receipts and evidence, the why behind the why uh, this rebrand is happening is anybody's guess. All I can do is provide you with my theories and the theories that are out there on the internet. I would love to know what you think and why you think it's happening. Let me know down in the comments, okay? But the fact that Kylie Jenner is in the process of a rebrand is not just theory, it's evidence-based and it's evidence-based because I was able to back this theory up via the evolution of her brand partnerships and obviously her sense of style. Kylie Jenner throughout her career has collaborated with a ton of different brands in somewhat chronological order. Kylie Jenner's collaborated with OPI and Sinful Colors on some nail polish. She's worked with Paxson on the Kendall and Kylie collection. She's worked with Steve Madden on a shoe and handbag collection for the Madden Girl line. She's partnered with Bellamy Hair on a hair extension collection called Kylie Hair Couture. Couture with a K. 
She was an ambassador for skincare line Nip and Fab. She's worked with British retailer Topshop. She was the face of Puma. She was the face of Beats headphones on a collaboration between Apple and Balmain. She's worked with a uh, Melbourne-based sunglass brand Qu Quay or Quay K. I'm not too sure how to pronounce it. She's had brand deals with Calvin Klein and Adidas. She's collaborated with Fashion Nova a ton. And she's also endorsed a bunch of other products such as Sugar Bear Hair Vitamin, Waste Gang Society, Waste Trainers, Detox Fit Tea, etc. From a marketing perspective, what all of these brands have in common is that they are not or would not be what we would consider luxury, prestige, or premium brands. These are brands that are somewhat youth driven, inexpensive, and accessible. They have what we call mass appeal, okay? And if you want to talk about Fashion Nova, Steve Madden, and Topshop, they're also considered kind of cheap from a quality standpoint. And so when you couple that with Jenner's fashion over the years, this is in the collaboration portfolio or even the aesthetic of an influencer that screams, I am high fashion expensive, premium, okay? It doesn't scream, I am sophisticated and to be taken seriously. But in 2022, 2023, that changes. And Kylie Jenner's collaboration portfolio goes from Fashion Nova to Acne Studios, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Dolce and Gabbana. Suddenly, Kylie Jenner is invited to the shows and dressed by brands like Coperni, Chaparelli, Thierry Mugler, Balmain, Margiela, Balenciaga, Lowe, Prada. And in 2023, especially, she is spotted during Fashion Week outside of the shows in an array of quiet luxury outfits, which are in stark contrast to what she's usually known for. So there is a very obvious attempt, in my opinion, to position Kylie Jenner as a product that distances itself from you know youth driven mass market appeal into a more sophisticated luxury and prestigious brand but obviously you know rebranding is a process and there's still a little bit of friction there Kylie Jenner recently dropped a new fashion line that's in part what people believe she was up to she was leading up to something with this and uh, a product drop was going to be one of them and so they were right and she dropped a new fashion line called Kai which uh, in this collection was a collaboration with the edgy fashion brand Amelia and uh, the products are plastic okay it's trying really hard but as I told the fashion channel understitch it still gives me Halloween costume vibes it's not high fashion quite yet it still looks and is kind of cheap and plastic which embodies one of the main issues with Kylie Jenner. If Kylie Jenner wants to fully ascend into a luxury, prestige, high art space, okay, and especially in fashion, in my opinion, she really needs to get over the public perception that she is a emotionally and intellectually obtuse object. When you're attempting to enter highbrow artistic spaces, okay, you're going to need to be able to give what the Kardashians have had traditionally a very hard time giving us. Personality, soul, depth. To be an artistic muse, okay, of the highest caliber that lasts, you need to be able to inspire artists of the highest caliber. And you need to be able to move more than just people's dicks. And that, in part, requires letting the walls come down and practicing the art of vulnerability. Coincidentally, this is something that actor Timothy Chalamet is extremely well versed in and is something that I believe human to human he could help her with. So beyond the idea that Timothy Chalamet, just from like a functional standpoint, as a prestige actor could potentially rub some of that prestige off on Kylie Jenner, if the connection is authentic, he might even be able to help her develop and communicate that deeper side of her if it exists. Timothy Cutlet might just be in the all-time best position to help Kylie Jenner bring down these walls, okay, that she's built around herself and move us. But Kylie Jenner isn't the only person who needs help transcending celebrity into full-fledged iconhood. Timothy Chalamet needs some help too. And Kylie Jenner might just be one of the keys that could help him solve his better male problem. Timothy Chalamet's better male problem. 
So Timothy Chalamet is a 27-year-old actor who grew up in New York City. From a superficial perspective, he is quite literally uh, everything Kylie Jenner is not. Okay, He has what we call pedigree. His mom was a Broadway dancer and actress. His grandmother was a Broadway dancer and actress. His sister is like a ballet dancer and actress. His dad worked for UNICEF. He's French. He's bilingual. He spent his summers outside of Lyon. His name is Timothy. But most importantly, he is widely respected and admired in his field. He is known to be an incredible actor, incredible at his craft. Timothy Chalamet is known for, quote, his sensitive portrayals of complex characters in independent films and blockbusters, and for his, quote, artful humor in ensemble comedies. His performances and work are quite literally described as emotionally, physically, and intellectually alive. Quite the opposite of the vapidity traditionally associated with the Kardashian Jenners. Timothy Chalamet blew up as a result of a independent film called Call Me By Your Name, directed by Luca Guadagnino. The film is basically a queer love story where Chalamet plays the role of Elio, a young man who falls in love with his father's summer intern, played by Army Hammer. It was a bold role to play. I uh, saw it in one of my queer film classes, and he played the role exceptionally well, and it blew everyone away. He received a Oscar nomination for it, and since then, he's basically been like one one of the darlings of the indie film circuit and also just like Hollywood as a whole. I think his his appeal goes beyond the indie film circuit at, at this point. He has also started to build a bit of a reputation for himself in high fashion circles. Um, he's known for uh, his attempts at redefining masculinity through fashion and basically gender bending. This is funny because like his style is cool, but I've always hated the smugness with which he's like he wears the clothes. Um, as we say in French, genre, c'est cool, mais comme calme-toi, genre calme-toi. There's just like this, like this, like vibe that he wore the clothes that just made me want to like humble his ass. But then I discovered that he styles himself or that he used to style himself, which gave me a newfound respect for his willingness to take risks and explore. So, uh, you know, respect. However, for all of his pedigree and success, Timothy Chalamet, in my opinion, has a bit of a branding problem. Many people consider Timothy Chalamet to be one of the best actors of his generation, a modern day James Dean, and someone who has the potential to be a iconic leading man. But as one critic said, he's basically at this point missing what Titanic did for Leonardo DiCaprio and what Fight Club and Ocean's Eleven did for Brad Pitt. Something that cements him into the public consciousness as a alpha star. Key concept here, alpha. Now, I understand that looking at the world in like alphabet of binaries uh, is incredibly reductive, but I'm telling you, a lot of people think this way. And when I asked some random dude if he knew who Timothy Chalamet was, you know what that person told me? Oh yeah, the guy who f the peach. This is because in Call Me By Your Name, Timothy's character, Elio, in a teenage moment of homosexual lust, a peach. And this to me perfectly embodies the public perception that people outside of highbrow art circles have of Timothy Chalamet. He's a fucking better male. They see him as this guy, okay, a fucking Wes Anderson character. In doing research for this video, I literally read people describe Timothy Chalamet as a sickly Victorian child, a waif-like beanpole, an androgynous theater kid. Nothing wrong with that. But isn't that quite the opposite of the alpha male archetype traditional masculinity tends to put on a pedestal? And yes, while I do think traditional concepts and standards of masculinity slash masculine beauty are evolving, uh, are they evolving fast enough? In my opinion, being a leading man slash alpha star requires a certain amount of mass appeal, especially amongst male audiences. In other words, to be a leading man, to a certain extent, you need to be someone other men want to be. You need to be the man. And unfortunately, many men, as a result of their internalized homophobia, 
uh, would probably not be inclined to look up to the gay boy who f***ed a peach. And so, ascending to alpha male leading man status, who has mass appeal, must require, to some extent, making some compromises with uh, outdated traditional expectations and notions of what it is to be a man. And based on my humble observations as a woman, one of the easiest ways beyond accumulating money, success, and status, uh, men can ascend to the man status is to bag really hot women. The fact that Leonardo DiCaprio for the past like 20 years has been associated with a steady stream of the hottest arm candy on the planet, while in feminist circles might make him a little cringe and borderline predatory, on a mass appeal level, I think does nothing but to add to his alpha man status and add to his virility, and it's good for the brand. And while Timothy Chalamet has historically dated very hot women, Lily Rose Depp, Lourdes Leon, Elsa Gonzalez, none of them have the public profile and level of sex appeal that Kylie Jenner has. And this is true for all the Kardashians. As we can see echoed in the very disgusting comment made by Dave Portnoy, you might not want to wife a Kardashian currently as it stands given their brand, but I guarantee you many men would not mind bagging that. And so... Having a Kardashian on your arm is a flex. And it's the kind of flex that I think can make dudes slowly start to take notice that this man, Timothy Cutlet, has got some obvious game and start looking at him with the kind of male on male gaze slash respect slash street cred mystique needed to fully solidify his ascension to the man status.